Hello and welcome to Feed the Seed to Succeed, keeping a positive here on the air. So um, before we begin, let's do a introduction. I am Fungus. I'm, I'm, teased, I'm teased to what it do, you know what I mean? And um, I'm Rock, the time done. How are everybody how you doing out there today? I'm Marcus from Unity. How y'all doing? Righteous. So, uh, you know, we, we today's show is centered around um, Second Chance second chance Month. This April is Second Chance Month. So we've been uh, um, in the Second Chance Month and talking about all the work that we did this month and also moving forward. But uh, before we do, um, folks, you got like a little brief, little brief um, 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 definition that you found for um, Second Chance Month? Yes, Second Chance Month was uh, started in 2017, and it's a nationwide effort to raise awareness of the collateral consequences of a criminal conviction. And it's to uh, it's led by Prison Fellowship, largest nonprofit serving uh, prisoners, formerly incarcerated people, and to advocate for uh, justice reform. Right on. You know, and I think it's, it's noteworthy to highlight the time done. We actually got started in 2017. Like, what? Well, well, so much... Well, when we first started, we were called Second Chances. We were Second Chances. And we did Second Chance events all over the um, state of California, you know. And we even did one here in Riverside that we called Second Chances for Advances. And um, all we do is, 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 is we're trying to um, reduce the amount of, of, of collateral, well, first cause awareness of what all the collateral consequences of criminal conviction is. But then now that we defined it and tell how many people in California have um, criminal convictions, which is over 7 million, right? And they face over 4,800 in California, but 48,000 nationally, right? We start highlighting all the different um, barriers that people face. So our goal is to reduce the amount of people who have records and, 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 and reduce the amount of um, collateral consequences that we face, you know? So like, I think like it, 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 it's really good that it, it, it's an actual month now to highlight this, you know, because like for uh, the longest time, it seems like it was trying to educate people on this on, on these issues was going laying on deaf ears. But now, like, you know, through all the efforts and stuff that we got going on, you know, it's starting to um we're starting to change policies, you know, through through awareness and through the work and the people that's doing it. Is, is is on here so like i first and foremost i'd like to um introduce my brother rock and uh explain to me what second uh, second chances would mean to you um the second chances um uh, what it, it means to me is uh giving a, a person a, a opportunity to kind of like you know go forward and succeed you know with life after you know having some type of setback uh, infraction, you know, with the law that kind of possibly led to, you know, form of incarceration, et cetera. Um, second chances of we, 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 which we're experiencing right now is under a bill that, you know, time done just got passed with the SB 731. Uh, SB 731 has allowed folks to get, you know, just about anything on their record expunged with the exception of a sex offense. And it's um, retroactive going all the way back to 1973. Um, for me, that is big second chance because um having a past felony that's been hope has held me back. And um that the, the felony that is that's holding me back the most is the one when I got tried as a adult when I was 16. Um but now I'm being in a position to where I won't be defined by that felony and allow me to go forward to where I can gain for employment and you know um things are different. So that's 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 the second chance, you know, um at life for me. And um, going forward, so that's what you know. A second chance has been um, to me just you know, giving people the opportunity to to have an opportunity to go forward after some type of setback in life. Yeah, thank you, thank you, brother Rod, and I appreciate you wholeheartedly every single day. And Marcus, look it. One the reason why we changed our name from Second Chances to Time Done was because we felt that. We was never given a first chance. So many people ever feel that they wasn't given a first chance. Marcus, explain to me, tell them who you are and why you wasn't given a first chance. How y'all doing? Um, so so my name Marcus Woods. Uh I'm like Rock, man. I, I I was convicted by the time I turned 18. Uh and I I was convicted under a crime that I didn't commit because I wouldn't tell. Just 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 completely. So 
for those who 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 have got time and 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 done their crimes, uh, for me it, it was it, it it was the same but different because I didn't do it, but I still had to do that 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 same time. So I I didn't even get the first chance to be an adult, you know, being taught as adult uh, as a kid, man. They they just sentenced me, you know, and 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 uh, for one to be able to kind of get that back is it, it, is is something that'll never happen, man. So having a having a first chance is, is something that 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 I missed out on uh, because I didn't, you know, I didn't I didn't get a chance to grow up uh, as a kid at that time, man. So so um, now I'm 45 years old and I'm still trying to start my my life. Uh, a new all together right now. Yeah, see, and this is why we it, it's important to educate people about the collateral consequences of criminal conviction. For the people who don't know, a collateral consequence is a legal sanction, a legal barrier, a, a obstacle that is put in our way after we have um, been convicted of a crime. So like, you know, it's things such as like, like I've talked about before, like crime-free housing, where we live in certain apartments because we have a record and they, and, and, and they do it, they say under the guise of, 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 um, of, of crime prevention, but really what they're doing is setting up um, what we call post-conviction redlining, where we can't live in certain communities and like, like the communities that we are forced to live in, you know, it's where you get poor education and, 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 and other things that make it harder for a person to um, matriculate in society once they have a record. So like, so like, you know, that's one thing. And then there's another thing like such as like legal licenses. See, I didn't realize, I used to hear this about legal licenses. I didn't realize how much, you know, legal licenses was important because like, Legal licenses creates all kinds of jobs. Like, and this is where the assertiveness go to with the collateral consequences, because like to be a barber, you need a legal license. To be to um to work in, in, in nursing, you need a license. Like all these different occupational licenses, and many of them we were banned from. And then we have things such as called a blanket ban, right? And see the blanket ban, the blanket ban is saying that. They don't hire you no matter what your crime is, you know, and, and, and that's like not fair because if I did a crime of, um, just say for instance, fraud, then why I can't work in a hospital? You know, like my crime has nothing to do with that, you know? So it's like, you know, these are the type of um, system, things that we have to do. And then it's like, also, like I said, housing, jobs, and then like, so, 73% of the, the collateral consequences that we'll face once we have a record is um, a lifetime ban. We'll, we'll never get that right back again, you know? And then over 50% is work-related. So then it don't, it, it, it makes it hard to get a job. And like, for some people, when they can't get a job, they kill and rob. You know, it, 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 it's the saying goes is that nothing stops a bullet like a job, you know? So like, this is why it's important that we provide opportunities for people, like Marcus organization says to have unity, you know? So um, um, Rock, how, how, explain some of the um, barriers that you have faced or people that you work with have faced. Um, you know, it's ironic that you bring up the, the barber situation because I was, I, was, I was in a situation like that and it was, um, it was um it was almost like a haphazard situation um i mean i had, it, was, it was years ago and uh it was a time where a lot of the youngsters was getting these little designs in their hair and stuff like that so i drew i know how to cut in here a little bit from being inside the system but i was really trying to encourage um some of my young partners to kind of like hey man get a barber's license because they was doing a lot of other stuff you know their time wasn't done at that time mine wasn't either so i was good but doing a little bad and i was like hey you guys should get a uh, barber's license, you know, you already got people coming over here, you're doing a lot, you cutting hair out the garage, just kind of go do it. So there was a place over here on, in LA, um, most people should know this place, a guy by the name Mr. Green, he had been cutting hair for years and teaching people how to cut hair, and he had a barber college that was uh, on 57th in, um, in um, Vermont, 
Um, so, you know, and it's a triad right there. It's three opposing areas. Nobody gets along. But right there where he's at, it was kind of like almost like a safe passage because of what he was doing. So anyway, none of the youngsters wanted to do it. So I took one up with me. I said, man, you know, what? I'm going to sign up for this. Um, and I went over there to talk to uh, Mr. Green to try to get in part of his barber program. And when I attempted to get into his barber program, he asked me one question. He asked me to have a felony. And I said, yes. And he told me I couldn't do it. So he asked me how old was, you know, my, my little partner that was with me. I was like, he was um, he, he, he was um, 16. He said he can do it, right? Never questioned the fact that he had a felony or not because he's just thinking that he was 16. I caught my first felony at 16, so he was like, he could do it. But at that time, I didn't really pay no attention because this was a time where, you know, you was always denied. You know, I had a felony. Everybody was denied. Windows was closed. People weren't coming home as, as, as they are now. Wasn't a lot of people out there trying to reform laws. It was just, you know, it's just what it was. And um, years went by, and I always thought about that situation, but really never paid no major attention until I seen the uh, wall of collateral consequences that, you know, uh, Tom Dunn had um, posted up and it was, it was at the Capitol. And it was like, wow, look at all this stuff. And it was these different licenses and stuff like that. And just had me run across down the list and came across like, you know, Barbara thing. So what I was able to do was make a connection. You know, it wasn't just me having a, 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 a just me being denied because I had a felony. There was targets on people who had felonies and certain licenses was blocking them out. And I never understood that because everybody who I knew who cut hair was like, they was making ha money hand over fist. It was like a hustle. It wasn't no taxes. It didn't, you, you, make, you get a haircut, $20, you pay $20. It went into the guy's pocket. I didn't see it go in the register. It was like a good hustle. Um, so that was, you know, one of the things that um, I experienced, you know, it opened my eyes to some other things. And what it really made me realize was that some of the work, work that we've been doing, We've been working on the surface, right? So with time done and then the policies and the direction that time done started to take in regards to sunset and convictions, that was different. That was doing the underneath the surface work that needed to be done because I, you know, we've been working in intervention and helping homies get jobs. Dudes who was good dudes, we help them get a job. They would have three or four jobs in like two and a half months. And be like, brother, what's going on? Like, we're trying to help you. And it's like, rock, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we always conclude because of the population that we're dealing with, the bad. You know, maybe it's them. Maybe they're not getting enough for work. And, and they were standing around long enough to collect the check before the background check came back. Once the background check came back, it was on to the next job. And being stuck in that perpetual rut. After we had that happen to a couple of guys, like two or three times, dudes would tell me, like, hey, rock, I can't do it no more. And they went back to the streets and from the streets, they went to the system. And we on the surface trying to do the work, but not really understand what was going on. And what was happening was everything that was underneath. These barriers from having a felony was pulling the ground from underneath a person, not allowing them to go forward. And for so long, we've been charging ourselves, right, with this issue. And really, it's been the system. So under SB 731, we've been able to change that. We got people who got smiles on their face because they realize it's a new reality. They don't have to go back to yesterday. They don't have to commit some of those things that they was committing just to survive. You know, in order to survive, you know, it's a natural instinct. You know, it takes money to live. And if you don't give me that proper way to do it, you know, as T2 say, people will out there and be engaged in criminal activity because they're trying to do one thing, and that's survive. Um, so when I say, you know, we talk about second chances, man, SB 731 for folks who come from communities like we come from, it's really opened that door for a real second chance here in California. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and doing it, you no, know, we did, me and Robbie was at this big um, record clearing event in um, at the convention center. And um, man, the, 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 the conversation that people have with you with just the hope of getting all these barriers relieved from, you know, like, like man, I, I talked to a guy when we first started Time Done, he was with us. He was with Homeboy Industry. And he was like, man, I remember we was first talking about this. It was just like a dream. We we was dreaming of freedom. And he was like, this is actually happening. You know, this is actually happening. It's like a dream come true. You know, uh, Marcus, can you tell me about a dream that may have came true? For you, uh, me starting my nonprofit, man. I, I I was thinking about that in myself. Um, I actually I actually was, was reading up and, and, and teaching myself uh, how to do the paperwork and all that. And I finally came home and, and stopped procrastinating in 
and I and I did it. You know, uh, that was something that I wanted to do uh, from the time I left, um, and I finally accomplished. And, and tell me what your tell me some of the work that your nonprofit does. So so we do a lot with the youth, man. We go into the schools and, and and do a lot of violence prevention work. Uh, we want to make sure that that the youngsters are are, are understanding of the consequences. Uh, other things that they do or can do uh, in order to land them in, in the space that they don't want to be in. You know? uh, we feed the community uh, constantly and make sure that, that that food insecurity is less of a problem. Not, it, it's not eliminated, but uh, we're doing our part in, in lessening the problem of people being hungry. You know? Right. So, 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 so you feed the community, you know, and, and, and tell me, tell, tell me what them three E's on unity stand for. Oh, they stand for educate, enhance, and excel. You know, we want to be able to teach the community, give them opportunities to 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 elevate themselves, and and, and, and flourish in it. You know, so uh, being able to 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 educate the youth, enhance the mind, and allow opportunities for excellence. Uh, that's something that, that needs to be done in all communities, man, because we have taken the opportunity to allow our kids to miss out because of the ways that we feel about society in today's, uh, in today's journal. Right on. And I got one more question for you. If, 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 for, your, for those who see me on, 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 on YouTube, you know, I, my backdrop says freedom, right? And I, and I I was thinking about you when I said I said man it need to be three E's in the back of this freedom right, but um, uh, <laughs> but, but, but you can also you can also put surviving freedom man because that's nah you 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 already you already man you you already seen my question you already seen it coming you already seen it coming so tell me about surviving freedom you already seen it coming so, I mean I mean oh. Uh, you got people that's incarcerated, man, for, for for crimes, literal crimes. But at the same time, you got folks out here that's you know trying to survive that same freedom by being able to to overcome their cons their collateral consequences and, and trying to become like we were talking about earlier, barbers, you know, own your own home, you know, become doctors, lawyers, things like that. You know, we we have to fight for that literally every day of our lives. You know, and and, and that's something that that um, simply we tired of, man. Our time is done. You know, I did my time. It's time for me to come home and be able to take that chance. You know, and, and, and make it a second one. You know, even if I didn't get my first. Nah, you're absolutely right. Because we we gonna, we gonna transmit. But I want before I transmit. Nah, let's let's do this. So we just said surviving speed freedom, right? So a lot of times people think that just because we have records that 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 we haven't been victims of crime ourselves, and that like you know we're we're, we're some type of monster. And I think this is what's noteworthy about the work that we do, you know. With, 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 with um, Alliance for Safety and Justice, California for Safety and Justice, there's two programs. Well, the first, first program that we highlighted was Time Done because we believe our time is done. But the other program that we do is called um, uh, um, uh, wait, Crime, Crime Survivor for Safety and Justice. And it's a network of people who have been through traumatic events, who have faced the trauma in their lives and, and, and they're getting together and organizing in the name of healing. And, and, and what they want is instead of like trumped up charges like other um, victim groups have, they're asking for um, resources such as a trauma recovery center and rehabilitation for people with past convictions so that they can come home and become better. So like Survivor Speaks and time done is both sides of the plane. But to, I mean, crime survivors for safety and justice is, and, and time done is both sides of the plane. But Survivor Speaks is the larger event that um, transpires through the um, crime survivors for safety and justice. 
And it's a lot, it's like a lobby day, a day of um healing that we have at the state capitol. And last weekend, all three of us was there. And we were there as people with records, but we was there also as um survivors. So my of uh, my so Marcus, um, you know, you I think you said you've been there since the first survivor, well, like almost for you've been there for multiple years of survivors speak. Talk to us about, you know, what Survivor Speak means to you. Um, Survivor Speak. So it's a, it's a space where uh, survivors of crime, whether it be falsely accused and locked up, you know, somebody in their family got murdered or uh, whatnot, it's a place for healing. Uh, it, it's an opportunity for folks to be around people who actually went through things that they went through be able to talk about it uh, and come to, come up with solutions in order to to be able to heal, you know, and, and, and get our lives back straight, you know? Absolutely. And, and Rock, what was your experience with um, Survivor Speak? Um, Survivor Speak, wow. wow. Um, I fall on both ends, you know what I'm saying? At one time, you know, um, just being a part of the, the, the lifestyle that we come from, we never want to identify as being kind of like a victim. You know, we, we, we didn't say we do stuff like that to people, even in the domino games, like, man, I'm victimized, you know what I'm saying? So they've never looked at that as being something positive, but we came with the idea of survivors. Like, you know, if you don't want to send you to survive, you know, it's, it's been remarkable. Um, just going to that event and, you know, being a survivor myself, you know, crime being, being shot several times um, and just seeing people kind of like come together, um, the unifying, around being, you know, you know, dealing with, you know, being a survivor of crime and also the trauma that comes along with that. Um, and, you know, the, the the impact that it can have on a family, especially if it's a loss. Um, and just seeing people kind of like just finding some type of, you know, solace, peace, and being there to advocate for policy. You know, so I think one of the biggest thing about Survivor Speaks is, 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 is not just us coming together and folks bonding, but the policy, the work, you know, that goes along with it to make sure that, you know, we sustain change and we get resources out to folks who have been impacted by, you know, um, you know some, some type of loss or, you know, just, just a criminal act. Um, seeing people unified. I mean, we had people coming out, you know, looking at it like it was a parade. It was people like, who was all of them? It was, it, it, it was remarkable. And the, 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 the people who kind of like, you know, got a lot of heavy weight on their shoulders from whether it's a mother or a father, you know, who don't, who don't suffer the loss. It's like that day, that weight was kind of like lift. Like you can see people kind of like elated, you know, uh, joyful and just like, you know, telling their stories and, and representing their loved ones and, you know, just keeping them alive and telling their stories. So it, it, it was great. The energy is just, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's unparalleled. And I'm, 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 I'm going to say that, you know, because um, the people, is what really kind of like um, made it. And um, that's um, that's an event, you know, that if you're in California, you're in any other states that we're in, um, you know, where, where time where, where time done is active or, you know, um, you know ASJ is active and they, you know, they doing, you know, crimes, uh, crime survivors, you know, uh, events, please go out there and check them out. There's energy there, there's love there, there's knowledge there, there's healing there that, you know, um, I haven't been able to experience so far throughout the rest of the state. So um, that event was, again, just, just, just remarkable. Absolutely. You know, and um, I always say this, is that, like, um, it's a saying that, that that's common that shouldn't be. But it's um, common when you come from where we come from, is that most of my homies are dead or in jail. And, 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 and this is a common saying, it's, it, it's not like, man, if you know anybody from the communities that we come from, you, you've heard this probably about a hundred times in your life. And, um, and like, that's why I'm honored to work where I work. It's because with time done, we're trying to do things so that we can stop mass incarceration and um, the barriers and people going back to jail because they can't get a job and they can't um, take care of their kids and they're homeless because they have nowhere to stay and and um, you know they they can't reunify with their their loved ones and all the barriers that that we face you know and then um, 
with the survivor network, you know, it's people that are dealing with traumatic events, death, all that stuff. So like through our work, it's why we, it's, it's prevalent that we be in the communities that we're in, you know, and, and, and have brothers like Marcus and um, Rock. We got um, um, Henry Ortega, Ortiz in, um, in Sacramento, and we got Sakati in, um, in the Bay Area, her and Fianni, Fianni and we got, um, and we got, um, man, help me, help me name some people, Rock. We got Ben over there in Stockton. Come on, just, you know, just, just 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 putting it down and, and keeping it going, um, and you know, along with 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 Henry, you know, we got Tina Chris over there too, just putting it down with him also in in, in, uh, in Sacramento. So yeah, yeah we got then, folks on the ground just doing the work. Come on, and then we got we got we got um Gilbert Johnson. Give Tom, Tom no. Duff Johnson. Come on, man. We got to give it up. You can't talk about Ty Dell without talking about Gilbert, Ingrid, Jay Jordan. You know, like, 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 man, it's, it's some dynamic people, the anchor organizations that help us start Pillars in the Community in San Diego, um, um, Project Kinship in Orange County. We got um, A New Way of Life in Watts, Homeboy Industry in, um, in, 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 in L.A., Faith in the Valley in Stockton. We got um Project Safe Return in um uh, in Antioch in Richmond. We got Boss in Oakland. Like you know what I mean. Like like these are the places that we're at. You know what I mean. So it's like you know it's the time gun phenomenon. And then on the survivor side, it's, it's it's sisters like 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 Denise, Denise, man, Denise, David Guzar, Tashante, um, uh, Lanesha. You know what I mean? Like, like the ceasefire people, man. Like, like, you know, all these people, man, it's, 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 it's dynamic. You know, it's dynamic, the healing, the, the uplifting, the, the, the every day getting up to make a way out of no way is the only way that we say, you know? So when people be like, there's no way, we be like, yeah, right. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause we gonna make it. You know, and, 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 and this is who we work with. And man, and, um, every day, like the energy that we bring towards healing and upward, upward mobility. Because like I said before, it hurts when every time I, any, I hear somebody say, my homies are either dead or in jail. And like the only way that we can make a difference is getting active. Is getting active in these communities, you know, and hopefully that we spark the flame. Or like I like like the name of this show is We Feed the Seed. We feed the seed to succeed, you know. And um, and I just just been just 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 had to take that time out to give a shout out to all these people. Um, Marcus, please um elaborate. They got healing events jumping off. In the near future, at Fairmont Park. One thing, real fast, I definitely want to um, highlight. You know, Aaron Foster. So oh yeah. Good. So there's resources out there in, in Central Valley as well. You know, you do have Aaron Foster out there with the chapter. A uh, time done. Aaron Foster, Tony McNeil. Come on, yeah, not nah, Aaron. Me and Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Foster, man. That's that's been my homie for about about seven years. You know. And um, I met him at, in, in Chicago. We went to a, a violent inter, intervention program and I met him in Chicago and I didn't know him. You know, I met him, I ended up meeting him in a, in a lobby because, you know, we, we ended up meeting in a lobby checking in, you know, and there's a story to this too, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this one for later. But, um, but, 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 we was at this table in, in, in this one intervention in Chicago. It, it, you know, you know, Chicago is it, a lot of intervention and it's a lot of like people really didn't do this work. And this guy who was a poet, he went on there and started telling this poem about like the struggle and, and, and what was going on in the community. And we all guys that thought we was tough and chest out, you know, 10 toes down, all this stuff, man. And this poet, he broke everybody down. And me and Aaron was sitting at the table together and we were both trying not to cry. <laughs> and we were both sitting there, I was sitting there looking, 
But but see, Aaron had just lost his um his son and his daughter. He lost his son and his daughter, I think, a year apart from each other on the same exact day. You know, and um Aaron, Aaron cried, bro. And I cried with him, man. And we we sat there, we held each other, and we boohooed, man, together. And um we've been friends since, you know. So like, yeah, when you said Aaron Foster, man, that's that's my brother, man. And I'm glad you, man, you mentioned him, you know, because, uh, man, man, and, and, and he's doing work in Fresno. You know, if, if you ever you ever been to Fresno, you know, you know, like for real. Hey, uh, we're just about out of time. Um, I'd like to wrap it up, you know, um, and let the listeners, viewers know, you know, where, where to get in touch or find more information about Time Done you know, uh, Reverence Project with Rock and Unity with Marcus. Can y'all tell us, um, you know, how people can find out about more information? Um, you can go to the website for Time Done. It's timedone.org. And, and it's all kinds of options. And you can see what we're doing all around the world. I mean, nation. And with the Reverence Project, um, www.trprojects.org. Um, and you can find about everything that we're doing over here at the Reverend Project, um, Watts in the general area right as well. Oh, Mar Marcus, where can people find about, about Unity? Um, you can go to www.unity.org, and Unity is spelled U N I T with three E's. Uh, there will be a, a, a healing event uh, April 29th at Fairmont Park. Uh, and we'll be out there. I'm pretty sure it's, there's other hidden events that's going to be going on around the country um, at that same period in time. Uh, so so kind of try to get uh, connected with CSSJ or Time Done in order to get information on, on where your nearest chapter is having a hidden event. Yeah. And you can find, you can find CSSJ information by um, Googling Safe and Just. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rock. Thank you, Marcus, for joining us. And of course, T. Stu for always, you know, holding it down and uh, having a good conversation. Thank you, Fungus. You know, your, your, your impact is humongous. You well, know. Thank, thank, thank you for having me. All right. Any any last words? Um, unity starts with you and I. And you can't spell unity. You can't spell community without the unity. <laughs>